Hello guys and welcome back. So let's try to create a lerp node and we're gonna lerp our arrows uh, with the eye white. So I'm gonna put this guy over here and put it in there. And then I'm gonna go grab the uh, eye white texture into the graph. Okay, so that's gonna be the eye white uh, and that's gonna be on top or maybe there has to be slipped, I'm not sure. Anyway, so for now, we're just blending those two like half by half, and that's not what I wanted to achieve. Uh, so to get that proper alpha, I need to know again the diameter of the uh, the arrows, and that's gonna be determining the, um, let's say, it's gonna be, de be determining the, uh, the alpha. Um, or maybe this guy. Uh, Let's see, maybe we can just use this guy. Let's take a look at that. So that's gonna be basically where I wanted to see just the arrows and the black area is where I want to see the, uh, I want to see the, the eye white. So I'm gonna go create a re, re rot node. Okay, so I can get a copy of that information and I'm gonna drag this guy over here. Let's see what it looks like if I just use that as alpha. And of course we can stop previewing it over there. Okay, you can see now, we're basically now blending uh, this with this. Okay, now there's a lot of a uh, blur here. Okay, so I can kind of wanted to make it, uh, give it some more contrast. Okay, let me create another rerot. Um, here, uh, connect that to there and back to there. Okay, so before we pass it through, I can add some node here in the middle to bring up the contrast of this edge. Okay, uh, one thing I could do is just, just divide it um, by a small value to make the white color brighter. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call this guy um, a scalar value. Um, you know what? Why am I using divide? I can use multiply. So that's a little bit easier to understand. So multiply this guy with this. I'm gonna name this guy as um, Iris at sharpness. Okay. So if I change that value to three, what I'm getting is basically making it tighter because we're making the values bigger. Okay, so if I change that to maybe 20, it's gonna be much brighter here. Okay, uh, maybe 100 or 1000, let's see what we're getting here. You see that, that this, is, this is really sharp here now, hopefully, <laughs> but I have to, clamp it. So saturation is going to be uh, the clamp you wanted to use. I don't know how they do it, but this one is totally performance free. Uh, and that goes to the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the actual rerod uh, that goes to, to the alpha. Okay, uh, let me stop previewing it. All right. <laughs> As you can see now, what we're getting is a really sharp kind of like edge. Uh, the reason we're getting that is because uh, we're making the bright, the color really bright, so they're all beyond one, and we clamp it. The saturation, you can think of it as a cheap way of doing clamp. Again, I don't, I don't know why, <laughs> why it's called saturate. Um, but as you can see, the comment says, the clamps the value between zero and one. It's free on most modern graphic hardware which is crazy, <laughs> the ch that, that 1000 is too much. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do this, I'm gonna do a multiply here. Um, and then I'm gonna multiply this guy by like 500. Back here to the sharpness here, I'm gonna change that to maybe 10 or let, let me try five. Okay, it's still too much. Uh, maybe 
one. That's 500 multiplied on top. I think that's already too much. Uh, so that shouldn't be 500. I'm gonna look for like a proper value, maybe 100. Yeah, that's a little bit softer already on the edge. Okay, uh, so now I can use just value from zero to one. Uh, so here I can say maybe 0 0.6, and that should make it uh, a bit softer, if not a lot. And I can go for like 0 0.1, and that should make it a little bit more a little bit more soft. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that way we are able to control how sharp it is over there. All right. Now, one more thing I want to be able to control for the eye, uh, which is um, the amount of distortion I wanted to really have here. That's probably too much in its setup. So here, um, before I pipe it, this guy into the divide, or even after this, um, we can do a multiply here. Okay. To kind of like remap or scale the depths we we're calculating here. So we're gonna multiply that by a scalar value parameter, and I'm gonna call this this one uh, Aris depths. Okay, and then the the value here will be from zero to one, I guess. Okay, and then apply. So you can see this depth, if it's zero, we're having no depth, so everything is gonna be exactly like you just have the texture slapped on top. Uh, but if I change it to like something like 0.5, then it's gonna have some depth on it. Okay, we, we'll be able to see some kind of like a fake refraction happening, right? Right, uh, and then we can, you know, use this value to determine like, how much of a uh, fake refraction we want to actually have on the surface of the model. All right, cool. Um, so that's basically the core uh, techniques uh, or mass for this. Okay. And then afterwards, we can do some control of the specular roughness. So this is going to be the specular, and this is going to be the roughness. Okay, and roughness will be um, 0 0.3, I guess, or 0 0.2. Specular will be 1. And, oh yeah, for the shader here, we could, there is actually a, uh, uh, eye shader, uh, which requires you to do a tangent output. Uh, I don't particularly feel like that's, mm, I don't feel the benefit of that. And they don't have any documentation on that, so I'm, I'm not sure what I'm doing over there. So we can use subsurface scattering. At least that's something I know what it is. Uh, subsurface scattering allows you to uh, choose a uh, subsurface profile here. Okay. And it's, if we don't have any, it's gonna use a default one, okay? So what we have to do here is we have to go define it ourselves. So here to the content brother, I'm gonna go create a uh, material texture and subsurface profile, okay? I'll call this guy SSS underscore uh, I, okay? And it's looking like this back here to the eyeball. Uh, I'm gonna use the subsurface uh, profile there um, with, oh, actually that's gonna be subsurface profile, this one. <laughs> so then we can choose uh, the subsurface scattering profile there, uh, which is gonna be this one. Uh, this is gonna give it, give it some subsurface scattering um, happening, just like in real life. Uh, and uh, we can double click there and can, we can tweak the scatter radius, the surface uh, subsurface color, RGB, right? And the default setting is gonna be like a human skin. Okay, so I think that's okay. Um, but maybe uh, for the color here, I'm gonna try to make the R smaller like uh, 0.4 so that we don't have 
a lot of red color because I don't think we have that much of a blood in the eyeball. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that. Okay, now back here to the to the material of the eyeball. You can see we're having this really cool like uh, refraction happening. Uh, one last thing is gonna be our normal map. So that should be hard because we have normal map slot right here. So all we have to do is go back to Content Browser and drag the normal map in there. Okay, and that normal map goes to the normal. And we can right click and convert it to parameter. Okay. We can call this guy I or normal actually. <laughs> normal all right and then for those two textures we can also convert them into parameters okay and this one will be the um i i white color and this one will be iris color oh that's not I'm doing the group, so that I, I don't really want to give it a group. Uh, copy that. Oh, I actually change that to um, as color. Okay, and this one will be I white color. Go ahead and apply and save this. All right, so let's see if we can utilize it. <laughs> I think the normal map is a little bit too strong. Uh, so I'm gonna tweak that also. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna do like a lerp here. And I'm gonna lerp it with um, another color here. And this color will be uh, one on the blue channel. Okay, connect that over here. And then create a scalar here and connect that and connect that to the normal. So we're blending a normal map with a flat normal map. And that's going to be, um, I'm going to call this guy uh, normal strings. Okay, so that means I have to actually flip those two. And then I'm going to change the normal strings to 0.3 for now. So it has some normal map, but much weaker than we were having before. Okay, that's better. All right, maybe one more thing we can do uh, is to control the color of the arrows. So we do a multiply, and we can create a vector holding on V and click and connect that to the multiply and we make it uh, white for now in the default settings we can call this guy iris color mod okay all right just wanted to create enough controls so we, when we use this uh, we, when we derive instance from this guy we can tweak all those things we specified Cool. So now go back to uh, the content browser. We can grab our eyeball material and create a uh, material instance. Okay. Now we can drag our eyeball geometry in. Okay. And then let me rotate it this way so we can see it in front of the light. Okay. Mm, you know what? I think I'm getting the wrong UV, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think we can double click to open the eyeball. I'm gonna switch that to the eyeball instance and save it. Okay, I think my UV is actually flipped on the actual eyeball geometry or maybe it's not. It looks fine here in this viewport. Okay. Um, let me go back to the 3D view. Maybe it's okay here too. I'm just not seeing it. Like, 
not, not, not seeing it from a simple lighting, so it's reflecting a lot of stuff. Okay. Anyway, let me just double click to open the material instance. That's the one we're using now. Okay. Let me drag it over and I can I can close out these and save them. compiling that so now what I can do is I can start tweaking some of the values like I can uh, go to the area steps I can make it go deeper or not as deep okay that's definitely too deep so we can lower that down Uh, let me go create a new level, an empty level, so that I can see them. <laughs> Drag a point light over here. Uh, let me zero out its location and make it mobile. And for the eyeballs, I'm also going to try to zero out their location. All right, now you can see we have this reflection happening to the eyeballs. Nice, right? Um, and we can then tweak the things here like the iris diameter, and that's going to control how big the iris is. And we can control also the uh, pupil scale to make the pupil bigger or smaller to control the dilation. Okay, and we can of course control um, the roughness to make it rougher or sharper. Uh, we can control the normal strength to make the normal stronger or weaker also. <laughs> uh, yeah, so even IOR can be tweaked. So LR should be always bigger than 1, though, because uh, 1 means the speed of the light. And any value smaller than 1 will basically mean it's faster than light. <laughs> it's faster than the, 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 the speed of the light uh, when light, light travels it. Uh, that's actually impossible. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, cool. I think that's... I think that's the core techniques I want to talk about to create a kind of like realistic looking eye. Uh, we went through the texture, the modeling, the UV, and the shader built up in Unreal. Okay, and it's all resting on just this one simple layer of geometry to achieve that. Now, one thing I kind of want you to be aware of is that when you're modeling your eye, you could actually have mirrored this eye to the other side. Now that means the U direction for this eye is going to be the flipped direction for the other eye. Okay. If you're having a problem, you're seeing this eye to be normal and this eye to be already like stretched or, or pushed in, all you have to do is go back to Maya and flip the UV of this eyeball and that should fix it. Okay. This is, that's one thing I think that's worth mentioning. Okay. Otherwise, you have to create two uh, two materials for two eyes, which is kind of annoying. Okay. All right, you can see how good that reflection actually looks like. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so yeah, uh, now it's up to you to start tweaking. Like, maybe I want the color to be darker. Maybe I wanted to, I don't know, whatever you wanted to do, right? You can start tweaking them now. Um, kind of blue eye, maybe. <laughs> All right. So um, one thing I do wanted to know if, is that if any one of you have a better understanding of that uh, or have a better explanation on the math I'm trying to do here, okay, I would like to hear, or better solutions, because that solution, I'm not sure if, this is, if there is a more accurate way of doing this, uh, this part. Okay. Other than that, the other maths are pretty straightforward. Mm. So yeah, um, just leave your ideas in the comment so that I can see it and maybe we can talk about like how to improve this. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. See you next time.